have control. I have control. Five, four, three, two, one. kind of marine. A marine who, if successful, is not supposed to fight. His mission is not combat, but reconnaissance. He is the recon marine. At home in depths ranging up to 60 feet, the recon marine is skilled in the uses of face masks, May West, and flippers. At home as well at 2,000 feet. His basic gear also includes the full jumping equipment of the airborne parachutist. Frogman and paratrooper, he is the Marine Corps' answer to the changing military demands of modern war. Because you volunteered for duty with the Second Force Reconnaissance Company. Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, home of the Second Force Reconnaissance Company. Here, volunteers from all branches of the Corps get their first taste of what it takes to become a recon Marine. While you're here, today particularly, and for the rest of the time you're here, I want you to do exactly as you're told. Exactly. Uh, uh, uh. At full strength, the Force Reconnaissance Company numbers 147 enlisted personnel and 14 officers. But the actual recon work, the information gathering missions behind enemy lines, is entrusted to only a small handful of 50 specialists selected from those who survive a grueling screening process. Get up, get up! Who told you to get out here? Get up on that bar! Get up! Get up! Get up! You need some help, huh? There you go. Get your behind down. Get it down. Let's go. Let's go. What do you think you're doing there, huh? You think you'll leave or something, do you? Answer me, Marine, do you? Yes, Sergeant! Well, let's start doing the exercise. Yeah, what are you waiting for over there? What are you, huh? You going to sleep on me, man? No, Sergeant. Are you a Marine? No, Sergeant. Are you a Marine? Yes, huh? Sergeant. Well, you don't look like one. Get that head up. Look straight ahead. Get out on your knees. What are you doing, huh? What are you doing down on your knees? Nothing, Sergeant! Recon, recon, where have you been? Recon, recon, where have you been? Around the base, and we're going again. Around the base, and we're going again. All the way forward, all the way forward. Recon, recon, airborne, airborne, scuba, scuba, ranger, ranger. All the way forward, all the way forward. A daily two-mile run is routine. But most of the trainee's time is spent in the classroom. Here he must become proficient in such subjects as map reading, long-range photography, and telegraphy. Skills that may well hold the key to success or failure of some future mission. Really? 
In the Navy diving tank at New London, Connecticut, recon marines are taught the techniques of buoyant ascent, the official method of surfacing from a submerged submarine. Sometimes called blow and go, buoyant ascent is based on one simple fact of underwater life. As a man rises toward the surface, the water pressure decreases and the air in his lungs expands. The trick is to continually exhale this expanding air. Failure to do so means rupture of the lungs. This Marine followed instructions to the letter, but seconds later, one of his buddies is in trouble. Instructors alert for just such an emergency, quickly pull him into a safety lock at the side of the tank. Shaken up but unharmed, he makes the trip to the surface in a diving bell accompanied by a doctor. Thomas in the Virgin Islands, groups of recon men who have qualified at the tank in New London, board a submarine to finish their buoyant ascent training under realistic conditions. Successful ascents have been made from 300 feet, but 50 feet below the surface is a more likely depth for discharging a force reconnaissance team. Revolve into the trunk and checked out. Considered qualified. There shouldn't be any sweat going up to the surface. Do you have any questions? All right, let's go. A May West life jacket is necessary for a buoyant ascent in tank or ocean. The human body would not rise without it. But now two new pieces of gear are added. Flippers for swimming to shore and a face mask to protect the eyes and nose. With them, the recon men also take in these waterproof bags all the clothing, food, and equipment necessary for the successful completion of their mission ashore. They will leave the submerged sub through the escape trunk and ascend to the surface. Preparing to flood down. Time to flood down. Aye. First, seawater is let into the trunk. Flooding down. Securing the air vent. Securing the air vent. The rising water compresses the air in the trunk and by manipulating a vent. The team leader equalizes the pressure of this air with the water pressure outside. By the time the pressure is equalized, the water reaches the necks of the men. Preparing to secure the flood. Preparing to secure the flood. Securing the flooding. Securing the flooding. Flooding is secured. Flooding is secured, I... All right, prepare to go. Number one man preparing to leave trunk. Before leaving the trunk, a man fills his lungs with as much air as possible. Outside the submarine is a safety man wearing scuba gear. At his signal, the first member of the four-man team blows and goes.
On the surface, the recon team starts the long swim to shore. Army Jump School, Fort Benning, Georgia. Here the recon marine meets a hard man the Army Airborne Instructor. The commands are curt, the salute snappy, and the instructions loud. Go! One thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand! Hell in tight. Recover. Go! One thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand! Hell in tight. Recover. The 34-foot tower. For the first time, the men will experience a shock like that of an opening shoot. The 250-foot tower and two new sensations, floating to earth in an open chute and hitting the ground. All number one, slip to your rear, to your rear one, be relaxed to the hips and knees, head and eyes straight to the front, bend your knees slightly.
together on the ground, two members of the team creep toward the objective. Urgent information is radioed out immediately. When their mission is completed, they will arrange a rendezvous with a plane from the carrier. They may stay behind enemy lines for days or even weeks. In operations like this, where minutes can mean the difference between success and failure of a mission, the pickup plane can land and take off within 45 seconds. This time, it's an abandoned airstrip. Next time, it might be a highway.
Marines of 2nd Force Reconnaissance Company are the task force commander's eyes and ears in enemy territory. Reconnaissance Marines are an elite force with a mission to conduct pre-assault and post-assault surveillance in the support of amphibious landing forces. Force Recon Marines are different from other Marines because Force Reconnaissance Marines have a lot of heart. Every Marine in the company really wants to be here. They want to train. They don't wake up in the morning with, oh, I've only got 30 days left in the Corps. They've got a really good attitude. Basically, you're the eyes and ears of the landing force commander. What we do is, uh, if he has a particular interest in an area, we're supposed to go there and find out exactly what's going on there. Is there a bridge here that they can resupply with? Is there an enemy force massing here? What is going on in this area? And that way, we can let him know what is going on out beyond his lines so he can formulate a plan and continue to march. Most operations are conducted by four to six man teams, or at the most, a small platoon consisting of 14 men. The number of teams deployed depends ultimately upon the mission that is assigned. Force Recon Marines accomplish their objectives through stealth, maneuverability, and communications. Operating behind enemy lines, one mistake could be fatal, jeopardizing the entire mission of a landing force. We can send a man out to do a, a traditional deep reconnaissance mission to confirm the location of the target. He can confirm that location and get it back over 300 kilometers away to the force commander without ever keying his handset by burst transmission over a SATCOM. He's limited by what he can carry on his back as far as his rations and his water supply. He has to gather his own water. The risk associated with remaining undetected because, remember, he's out there alone with no support in a four- or six-man team. If he's discovered and he's compromised, then the mission is compromised and, and uh, the risk to the team is risen astronomically. This is Kalem. Kalem, over. Of force reconnaissance originated during the early days of World War II. As the Marine Corps entered the war in the Pacific Theater, scout companies from each infantry division would set out on reconnaissance missions. By the end of World War II, the Marines had established an amphibious reconnaissance battalion to provide the commanders with information for what today is the Force Reconnaissance Marines. The Vietnam War provided the reconnaissance marines with their first chance to put the skills learned during peacetime to actual use in combat. They were heavily relied upon to gather intelligence about enemy posts deeply concealed in the jungle. In Vietnam, traditional reconnaissance techniques were refined and new ones battle tested. Today, these Marines are chosen from a select few who volunteer to go through the company's brutal screening test. You will not talk to anybody. You'll keep your mouth shut, do as you're told, and fill out the questionnaires completely and to the best of your ability. The company has a fairly rigorous uh, selection process. In that selection process, uh, approximately, uh, we have an 82% failure rate. Uh, so we're looking at about 18 out of 100 to actually uh, make it through and, and receive orders to the company. 
Hey, come on, the sun's getting up. We gotta get going. In order, in order. At first light, the men set out on their first hour of testing. Remember your time. At 7 o'clock, the Marines have finished the initial physical fitness test, which consists of pull-ups, sit-ups, and a timed three-mile run. The cutoff time for passing this stage of the test is 18 minutes. Only one man succeeded. Number 16, 1757. Good job. Quickly, number seven, hurry up. Before the men start their aquatic tests, they must change into full combat fatigues. Can you swim? Yes. Like a fish? Yes. You can? Yes. We'll find out today. You will do a 10 minute survival float. Wet fatigues weigh approximately 30 pounds and hinder the men greatly while swimming. For this reason, they must attempt to fill their pants with air and use them for flotation. Before long, men begin to fail. Those who cannot complete the test must get out and wait for the few men who are able to finish the entire exercise. After nearly two hours of pool testing, the men find themselves back outside in near freezing temperatures, still in their wet fatigues. Front, cover. This is where we find out what you're made of, right here. Out, out, hey, out. The, the key element that, uh, that makes one guy succeed where another guy fails uh, is, is what he's packing between his ears. If he can think, if he can uh, uh, act on his own two feet, uh, regardless of, of uh, how cold it is or how hot it is, if he can continue on and accomplish uh, whatever mission that he's been assigned, uh, then he'll succeed at Second Force Recon Company. The Marines going through the Second Force Recon Indoctrination Program have had an extremely long day. After a full hour of exposure to the elements, they're told to complete two trips through the obstacle course. Despite the numbing cold and the previous four hours of hell, many of the men remain enthusiastic. Army Force Recon! Force Recon, you want to be the best of the best. And Force Recon is the best Marine Corps I saw. The screening test is taking its toll. As men fall off, they're escorted to the truck. For them, this signifies the end of the test. You can train a Marine to do anything. Uh, you can make him as any Marine as, as physically tough as, 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 as you want. Uh, but the, the, the key is, is something you can't give them is, is that mental, mental toughness. Um, and that's something that, that a man has to come to the unit with. We, we can't give that to him. What's your number, Seth Lake? 29. 34, 29. For those men remaining, the end is within sight. After a three-mile run with a 50-pound rucksack, the Marines finish their five hours of physical testing. We started off with 22 people, and uh, it looks like we had uh, probably five people make the minimum time on the final ruck run. A few of those, I know for a fact, didn't make the minimum time on the old course earlier, so I would imagine we'll probably have approximately probably three or four people pass out of 22 people. They just keep coming back and coming back and coming back until they chip away at it, until they make it. And those are the kind of Marines we're looking for here. The Marines are going to come back and keep working on it, get stronger and smarter and work harder and always improve themselves. The skills required for a reconnaissance Marine are nearly unlimited. However, traditional maritime exercises are still an integral part of their training. Amphibious insertion techniques are the backbone of Force Recon Marine missions. Since the Korean War, the helicopter has proved to be a vital asset for pinpoint insertions within hostile territories.
Today, two three-man teams, along with inflatable rubber raiding crafts, prepare to be dropped by a CH-53 helicopter. This exercise, called the Helicast, relies on precise coordination between the aircraft crew and the amphibious marines. With perfect timing, the boats, along with their crews, are dropped from the rear of the helicopter. They're met by fellow Marines to conduct shoreline reconnaissance missions. Here, a two-man team silently approaches a shoreline using bubbleless scuba equipment. In a wartime scenario, these types of missions would be conducted at night, making the soldiers nearly invisible under the cover of darkness. Even though the soldiers are armed, they usually do not engage the enemy. Gunfire would compromise their positions and potentially endanger the entire mission. We do not go out and actively engage the enemy unless directed to do so. We are not ground combat troops. Uh, we're reconnaissance marines. Using a camera, the team takes photographs of the area. These photos are to be brought back to the commander for tactical review. Amphibious missions are what the Marines have long been known for. However, parachute drops are also a widely used tactic to insert troops behind enemy lines. HALO is an acronym for high altitude, low opening. The aircraft climbs to 18,000 feet, where the thin air is a temperature of 30 degrees below zero without wind chill. At this altitude, the men must breathe pure oxygen to remain conscious. With the drop zone over three miles below, the men jump, free-falling for just over a minute to 4,000 feet, where they deploy their chutes. Once opened, the parachute becomes a means of transportation, enabling the Marines to silently maneuver with pinpoint accuracy onto the designated drop zone. In addition to HALO operations, the Force Reconnaissance Company utilizes the OV-10 Bronco, a small observation aircraft suitable for low-level clandestine parachute insertions. Three men are loaded into the modified cargo bay, with the last man strapping himself in to secure the entire team. The two OV-10s approach the drop zone, barely clearing the trees. The pilots pull the planes into a steep climb, The teams are literally pulled out of the aircraft by gravity, and their chutes are deployed by a static line mechanism. Roger, sir, I got six out and six open. Parachuting is a simple and effective method of infiltration. Once on the ground, the reconnaissance mission begins. Even though the mission of the Force Recon Marines is to avoid the enemy through stealth, he must have the ability to defend himself in the case of confrontation. The main purpose we use combat hand-to-hand uh, -hand training is, number one, build the heart of the warrior. Gives him a confidence in our training. And hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, I believe, is going to happen in any type of combat situation we have. No matter how high-tech the war becomes, hand-to-hand -hand is always going to happen. So we're getting ready for it. We're training on that level. In the event of a firefight behind enemy lines, the Force Recon Marine must constantly sharpen his marksmanship skills. The troops go through a modified training course, which tests their speed and accuracy. These assets are of utmost importance for the reconnaissance soldier. During a mission, if he fires his weapon, he must shoot to kill. The demolition team of the Force Reconnaissance Company is often assigned with direct action missions to destroy critical enemy installations. Um, we'll use today for making uh, test shots. That's uh, why we're out here. We're going to determine what type of charge we need to best attack this target. And we're going to keep in mind the mission. In preparation for their mission, the demolition team is making a series of C4 explosive charges. The plastic explosive is to be tested on surplus vehicles similar to those that lie behind enemy lines. 
the information gathered today will be analyzed and adapted to destroy those targets. This is our improvised satchel charge. What we do with this is uh, we could take out a comm site with this, throw it in the communications van. We can go up to a tower, and uh, we already calculated the amount of charge to blow the steel on a radio tower. You just go there, hang that sucker up, you're good to go. The team's mission is to get in and out of the area undetected, demolishing the objective before the enemy can react. six-man teams approach a shoreline without a sound. Point men precede the boats to provide armed cover for their landing. Safely and silently, the teams land on shore and conceal their boats in the foliage. In this direct action scenario, the mission of the two teams is to conduct reconnaissance on an enemy fortification deep within the forest. They must remain together at all times on the way to their designated surveillance position. Teamwork in a unit such as this is, uh, it gets to the point where at times when teams are together for a little while and they've got their operational procedures down, it gets to the point where they don't even use hand and arm signals anymore in the field. They just know what the other members is feeling or thinking when they operate. When the teams reach their observation post, the snipers fortify their positions along the perimeter while the satellite radio link is set up. This radio is their connection to the outside world. Without it, they would be completely on their own in the case of a mishap. We're going hasn't changed at all. But on your approach up to the landing zone, I want you to swing a little bit further south on your approach up to the uh, clearing. Roger that. Right. OK, remember when you're out there, you This gotta... mission is to collect intelligence on an enemy embarkment. There are many patrols in the area and the Marines must rely on each other for protection. When you're on an operation a week or two weeks out in the field and you're living with these guys every day uh, and you're sharing the same fighting positions with them and you're on long road marches with them and you're jumping out of helicopters with them, you get to rely on each other, you get to know each other. And that really bonds the team together, unlike anything I've ever experienced uh, in my infantry experience in the past. So it's unique and it's rewarding. Um, it's great. The cohesiveness of the group is put to the test while the Marines retreat to the extraction zone. A small group of enemy soldiers have been spotted on a road near where the helicopter is scheduled to extract them. Quickly, they set up an ambush. Being that we're small teams, small team elements, uh, security is paramount, and we must use surprise um, because we don't have the ability to take on a large force. We got to deliver that killing blow right off the bat, so surprise, violence of action, right off the bat and most paramount is our security at all times and then the ability to get out of town once we hit them. Cease fire! Cease fire! With the road clear, the helicopter is able to conduct the extraction. Just one bullet can disable a helicopter, potentially destroying a multi-million dollar aircraft and stranding the men in hostile territory. This technique of special purpose insertion and extraction, or SPY, enables the helicopter to pick up troops without landing. A SPY rigging allows small teams to hook up to a line attached to the underside of a helicopter and be taken rapidly out of enemy territory. I've never seen in almost 18 years of commissioned service a more disciplined a more talented group of Marines collected under one organization. They're superlative, they're smart, they're disciplined, they're focused. And it's their focus on their job, it's their focus on their lives that is, is most unique about these Marines, which makes my job a lot easier here. This focus develops from strong leadership, camaraderie among the men, and shared objectives. These soldiers have undergone some of the most difficult training in the world dedicating their lives to defending the freedom of the United States. People depend on one another. They take care of one another. Uh, Force Reconnaissance Marines spend more time with one another than their wives and family do with them. 
and uh, they become very close. And it's a bond between the men in this unit that lasts uh, lifetimes. And I believe that uh, there's no other place in the world where you can get a bond with your fellow Marines as you can as here. Everybody's like a bunch of brothers around here. You know, I feel cl as close to these guys as, I don't know, I guess a family member, probably even closer because I've been living with them for so long. There's a lot of integrity. To wear the wings and bubbles on your chest is probably one of the most glorified things you can do in the Marine Corps because people look at you and they know you're something special.
United States Marine Corps reconnaissance. In every conflict, there is a line drawn. It was never meant to be crossed by anyone. But crossed it will be by a special few for whom there are no boundaries, a few for whom there are no obstacles, a few for whom a singular title is reserved, reconnaissance Marines. The Marines behind enemy lines. Not everyone can join this rugged team. Only special, highly qualified Marines are recommended for reconnaissance. These men must pass rigorous swimming and physical fitness tests before they can be accepted into the basic reconnaissance course. Coronado, California. You're about to begin some of the most intensive and demanding training in the Marine Corps today. The fact that you're here this morning means that you have been screened and come highly recommended for assignment as a recon Marine. If at any time during this course you feel you are not cut out for recon, you are free to return to your unit. You will have nothing to be ashamed of. You should be proud you had the guts to try. This course will push you both physically and mentally further than you've ever gone before. This training is tough and for a very good reason. A recon team must operate on its own many miles behind enemy lines and for days at a time. We're here trained Marines to operate as a member of a team. Every Marine and a six-man recon team must place his life in the hands of his teammates. If you have the drive and you have the guts to meet this challenge, you can make it. Are you ready? Yes, sir! Instructors, take charge of the class and carry out the training schedule. This will be the three-mile time to run. You'll run a mile and a half to the turnaround point come back here to the finish line where I would To qualify for reconnaissance requires Marines who are in peak physical condition. We went into the water. We tread water for 30 minutes without touching the bottom or the sides of the pool. Your rifles are at the bottom of the pool at a depth of 15 feet. On my command, you'll retrieve your rifle and return to the surface. Stopping. Water qualification is important because reconnaissance marines are required to swim long distances in open seas. Knowledge and mental strength in a reconnaissance marine is as important as physical you'll strength. Be learning about the digital communications terminal or DCT. This piece of communication equipment is used to conduct burst. At the basic reconnaissance school, about 40% of the course takes place in the classroom. This is probably the most typical course you'll complete while in the Marine Corps. This course is designed to test your upper body strength, your endurance, and your ability to overcome any natural fear of heights. By the end of this course, you must be able to successfully complete all the obstacles in a prescribed amount of time. Run one and a half miles down the beach and put your fins on. You'll enter the water and swim 800 meters. After completing the swim, you will run the remaining one and a half miles to the finish line. You have 45 minutes to complete this event. As recon Marines, your use of camouflage and stealth is vital to accomplishment of the mission and to your survival. When on patrol, you must always assume you are under observation. Today we'll be doing a six-mile force march. I want everybody to stay together. I will lead the march, and Sergeant Lynch will bring up the rear. You'll begin your training on a 60-foot tower to my rear, and you'll be evaluated on technique. Reconnaissance Marines must be proficient in fast rope execution, because at some point, you may be inserted into an area where a helicopter cannot land. By the completion of this period of instruction, you'll be able to fast rope 60 feet from a helicopter with full combat equipment. This afternoon, you will be taking your patrolling written examination. To pass this portion of the course, you must score an 80% or higher. Today, for aerobic conditioning, you will swim 25 meters underwater without surfacing for air. What formula is used to determine the slope of the bridge approach? Vertical distance divided by horizontal distance. You've already received your classroom portion of instruction on high-speed casting, and today you're going to do it for real. This morning you'll be casting out of a 30-foot special warfare craft. Remember, you'll be going over 20 miles an hour when you hit the water. So make sure you use the techniques that you were taught. 
We'll move our boat to a position 1,500 meters. Reconnaissance off training ready. mission, Camp Pendleton, California. Four minute teams conduct surface checks. When a recon team is inserted into enemy held territory, stealth and awareness are essential. Roger, single enemy sentry and objective Alpha moving to objective Bravo. I'll copy over. Good copy. Roger, team one out. Training exercises can go on for a period of days and nights until all the objectives are successfully completed. at this time, how copy over. Roger, team one out. Mission, 29 Palms, California. An enemy tank is sighted, and this recon team calls for an airstrike. Action for Sierra, stand by for nine line breeze.
I'm Walter Cronkite. This is the story of a new kind of Marine. A Marine who, if successful, is not supposed to fight. His mission is not combat, but reconnaissance. He is the Recon Marine. At home in depths ranging up to 60 feet, the Recon Marine is skilled in the uses of face masks, May West, and flippers. <laughs> as well at 2,000 feet. His basic gear also includes the full jumping equipment of the airborne parachutist. Frogman and paratrooper, he is the Marine Corps' answer to the changing military demands of modern war. This is our story, The New Marine, as the Prudential Insurance Company of America presents The 20th Century. because you're volunteers for duty with the 2nd Force Reconnaissance Company. Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, home of the 2nd Force Reconnaissance Company. Here, volunteers from all branches of the Corps get their first taste of what it takes to become a recon Marine. While you're here, today, particularly, and for the rest of the time you're here, I want you to do exactly as you're told. Exactly. Uh, oh, uh, At full strength, the Force Reconnaissance Company right, numbers 147 on, enlisted personnel on, and 14 uh, officers. Uh, but the actual uh, recon hey. work, the information gathering missions behind uh, enemy lines, uh, is entrusted to only a small handful of 50 specialists hey. selected from those who survive a grueling screening process. Oh, get up, get up! Who told you to get out here? Get up on that bar! Get up! Get up! Get up! You need some help, huh? Do you? Get your behind down. Get it down. Let's go. Let's go. What do you think you're doing there, huh? You think you'll leave or something, do you? Answer me, Marine, do you? Hey, Sergeant! Well, let's start doing the exercise. Yeah, what are you waiting for over there? What are you, huh? You going to sleep on me, man? No, Sergeant. Are you a Marine? No, Sergeant. Are you a Marine? Yes, Sergeant. Why, you don't look like one. Get out ahead up. Look straight ahead. Get out on your knees. What are you doing, huh? What are you doing down on your knees? Nothing, Sergeant! Recon, recon, where have you been? Recon, recon, where have you been? Around the base, and we're going again. two-mile run is routine, but most of the trainee's time is spent in the classroom. Here he must become proficient in such subjects as map reading, long-range photography, and telegraphy, skills that may well hold the key to success or failure of some future mission.
In the Navy diving tank at New London, Connecticut, recon marines are taught the techniques of buoyant ascent, the official method of surfacing from a submerged submarine. Sometimes called blow and go, buoyant ascent is based on one simple fact of underwater life. As a man rises toward the surface, the water pressure decreases and the air in his lungs expands. The trick is to continually exhale this expanding air. Failure to do so means rupture of the lungs. This Marine followed instructions to the letter, but seconds later, one of his buddies is in trouble. Instructors alert for just such an emergency, quickly pull him into a safety lock at the side of the tank. Shaken up but unharmed, he makes the trip to the surface in a diving bell accompanied by a doctor. Thomas in the Virgin Islands, groups of recon men who have qualified at the tank in New London, board a submarine to finish their buoyant ascent training under realistic conditions. Successful ascents have been made from 300 feet, but 50 feet below the surface is a more likely depth for discharging a force reconnaissance team. Revolve into the trunk and checked out considered qualified. There shouldn't be any sweat going up to the surface. Do you have any questions? All right, let's go. A May West life jacket is necessary for a buoyant ascent in tank or ocean. The human body would not rise without it. But now, two new pieces of gear are added. Flippers for swimming to shore and a face mask to protect the eyes and nose. With them, the recon men also take, in these waterproof bags, all the clothing, food, and equipment necessary for the successful completion of their mission ashore. They will leave the submerged sub through the escape trunk and ascend to the surface. Preparing to flood down. Preparing to flood down. Aye. First, seawater is let into the trunk. Flooding down. Rising water compresses the air in the trunk, and by manipulating a vent, the team leader equalizes the pressure of this air with the water pressure outside. By the time the pressure is equalized, the water reaches the necks of the men. Preparing to secure the flood. Preparing to secure the flood. Securing the flooding. Securing the flooding. Flooding is secured. Flooding is secured, I. All right, prepare to go. Number one man preparing to leave trunk. Before leaving the trunk, a man fills his lungs with as much air as possible. Outside the submarine is a safety man wearing scuba gear. At his signal, the first member of the four-man team blows and goes.
On the surface, the recon team starts the long swim to shore. Weather conditions, enemy surveillance, and underwater terrain determine how close to the beach a submarine will come. For these exercises, teams swim up to five miles before they reach the beach. Once there, the orders are clear. Change into camouflage uniforms and proceed to the objective. Gather information. Then continue across the island to the opposite beach, change back into swimming gear, swim out to the still submerged submarine, and descend into the trunk. To accomplish all of this within a predetermined time limit is a back-breaking assignment. But for the recon marine, it is only half the assignment. Ahead lies the Army Jump School at Fort Benning. There they teach frogmen to become paratroopers. The Army Jump School, Fort Benning, Georgia. Here the recon marine meets a hard man, the Army Airborne Instructor. The commands are curt, the salute snappy, and the instructions loud. <laughs> Elbows in tight. Recover. Stand it up. Go. Oh, your feet and knees together. Start your count sooner. Recover. Stand it up. Have a. Stand it up. Go. What the hell? Elbows in tight. Recover. The 34 foot tower. For the first time, the men will experience a shock like that of an opening shoot. One five zero third man, the stick satisfactory exit. You look very good. Recover. Hey, you say? That's the one fifty two, sir. Fourth man, the stick. That's the one five two fourth man and the stick. You're counting late. You're not counting when the balls of feet leave the floor of the aircraft. You're waiting for the opening shock before you start your count. You may strike the ground someday and then start your four thousand count. It'll be too late then. Is that clear? Yes, Sergeant. Recover. Roster number one, fourth man in the stick, Sergeant. Roster number one, fourth man in the stick. Right here, sir. There are only three men in this stick, Sergeant. Are you awake? No, come third man, Sergeant. What are you now? Roster number one, third man in the stick. Are you three or are you four? Third man, Sergeant. Roster number one, third man in the stick. You have a satisfactory exit. Let's remember what man we are in the stick. If you can't remember that, you can't remember enough to jump out of an aircraft in aerial flight. Recover and get 12 squad jumps. Four on the right, sir. The 250-foot tower and two new sensations, floating to earth in an open chute and hitting the ground. Hips and knees, head and eyes straight to the front, bend your knees slightly. And 
then the real thing. The recon marine makes several jumps from an altitude of 1,250 feet. Master, get up! they get the recon marine in, how to get them out from behind enemy lines. It's done by plane, helicopter, or submarine. The method you are about to see is experimental. It is not operational, may never be. The man to be picked up is Marine Gunnery Sergeant Levi W. Woods. He will be picked up on the fly. From his harness, an inflated balloon carries a nylon line aloft. A P2V Neptune with a special yoke will snatch the line and Sergeant Woods, and an electric winch will wind him into the plane. States aircraft carrier Forrestal somewhere off the East Coast. From its deck, a recon team will take off on a mission which duplicates as far as humanly possible the actual conditions of war. There is one exception. Here, the enemy is the clump. If everything goes according to schedule, the mission will be a success. The team has been thoroughly briefed on the objective to be reconnoitered, the type of information wanted, and the nature of the country through which it will have to travel. The objective, an air base. What activity there? How many planes on the field? How's the security? Well, let's get photographs. The men will jump from a jet, an A3D twin engine long range attack aircraft. Inside, it is just large enough to seat the four members of the team.
simulated enemy territory. The A3D flies as close to the ground as possible to minimize the possibility of radar detection. Approaching the drop zone, the pilot must gain altitude so that the recon men will have room enough to jump up to 2,850 feet. Over the drop zone, 15 to 20 miles from the objective, the pilot throttles down and opens the door of the plane. back to the carrier and the recon men are on their own. For them, the period between bailout and touchdown holds the greatest danger. This is when detection is easiest and capture most likely. Safely together on the ground, two members of the team creep toward the objective. urgent information is radioed out immediately. When their mission is completed, they will arrange a rendezvous with a plane from the carrier. They may stay behind enemy lines for days or even weeks. In operations like this, where minutes can mean the difference between success and failure of a mission, the pickup plane can land and take off within 45 seconds. This time, it's an abandoned airstrip. Next time, it might be a highway. to the carrier. Traditionally, the men of the Marine Corps have been fighters with a fierce pride in the fact that they have often been the first troops ashore to engage the enemy. That is still their role. But today, a small band of Marines have been taught to move in before the battle, before the first wave, with cameras and radios. They are the recon Marines. 